what, what the mate is talking about. What's up, family? Let's get something straight out the gate. I'm a huge Peanuts fan. Growing up, you couldn't tell me nothing about Charlie Brown. So, of course, when I saw this picture floating around on the internet about Franklin, the one black character in the Peanuts, sitting along on Thanksgiving at the table by himself, while on the opposite side of the table, the other characters all gathered, I was thrown off. I was like, nah, man. Not Charlie Brown. Not Peanuts, man. Can we get past this racism stuff? So I did my research. And I found out that while the Peanuts, the show, did have some elements of racism, it did not prove that the creator, Charles Schultz himself, was a racist. Let's dig into the story. This is a screenshot taken from the Charlie Brown Thanksgiving television special, which first aired on CBS Network on November 20, 1973. 1973, y'all. While the question of whether this particular aspect of that special should be considered racist is a subjective issue, I can shed some light on how Franklin became a Peanuts character, an action for which Peanuts creator Charles Schultz had to fight against opposition from the entire comic industry. Franklin Armstrong first made his appearance in the Peanuts comic strip on July 31st, 1968. At the time, the United States was struggling with desegregation, and while the country had taken several steps to integrate the population, Issues about having black and white people attend the same schools, use the same bathrooms, or appear in the same comic strips were still matters of substantial controversy. Charles decided to add Franklin to the Peanuts gang after he began corresponding with Harriet Glickman, a retired school teacher from Los Angeles who was concerned about race relations in America and wrote to him in 1968 shortly after Martin Luther King Jr. was assassinated. Dear Mr. Schultz, she wrote, since the death of Martin Luther King, I've been asking myself what I can do to help change those conditions in our society which led to the assassination and which contribute to the vast sea of misunderstanding, hate, fear, and violence. Glickman thought the creator of the popular comic strip could play a small part in promoting tolerance and interracial friendship by including a black character in his strip. She sent off the letter not expecting a reply. Schultz replied to Glissman's original letter by saying that he had previously held off on introducing a black character, not because he was worried about meeting resistance to the concept, but because he wanted to avoid seeming to be patronizing. Glickman wrote back and asked him, would it be okay if she showed his letter to some of her African-American friends? Shortly after Schultz received a letter from Kenneth Kelly dated June 6, 1968, it reads, Dear Mr. Schultz, with regards to your correspondence with Mrs. Glickman on the subject of including Negro kids in the fabric of peanuts, I'd like to express an opinion as a Negro father of two boys. You mention a fear of being patronizing. Though I doubt that any Negro would view your efforts that way, I'd like to suggest that an accusation of being patronizing would be a small price to pay for the positive results that would accrue. We have a situation in America in which racial enmity is constantly portrayed. The inclusion of a Negro supernumerary in some of the group scenes in Peanuts would do two things. Firstly, it would ease my problem of having my kids seeing themselves pictured in the overall American scene. Secondly, it would suggest racial amity in a casual day-to-day -day sense. I deliberately suggest a supernumerary role for a Negro character. The inclusion of a Negro in your occasional group scenes would quietly and unobtrusively set the stage for a principal character at a later date, should the basis for such a principal develop. 
We have too long used Negro supernumeraries in such unhappy situations as a movie prison scene, while excluding Negro supernumeraries in quiet and normal scenes of people just living, loving, worrying, entering a hotel, the lobby of an office building, a downtown New York City street scene. There are insidious negative effects in these practices of the movie industry, TV industry, magazine publishing, and syndicated cartoons. Sincerely, KCK. Wow. That was 1968, y'all. Whoo, man. Does it really ever trip you out, man, of the pettiness of human beings? <sighs> damn, now I got to look at my damn cartoons differently, man. I got to look at Charlie Brown. I got to look at all these fights this man had every time. Now, every time I see Franklin in a scene, I got to think, how hard did Charles Schultz have to fight to keep him in that scene, just to have him in the scene, period? They were constantly trying to marginalize his role, Franklin's role. And there were times when Charles Schultz actually threatened to quit. Uh, some of the syndication papers that he was writing for. I mean, he was like threatening to walk off. He's like, I want, he really fought for that character. Now I know some of y'all saying, well, he didn't fight hard enough. Man, some hell of a times, bro. I mean, think about it, man. They, they was going crazy just the idea of somebody sitting in the front of a bus. These people tripping on cartoons. <laughs> Boy, that racism is a bitch. Lord have mercy. So there you have it. The infamous photograph of Franklin, the one black character in the Peanuts, being seated on one side of the table by himself while the other characters on the other side on Thanksgiving has been laid to rest, it's been explained. Some of y'all ain't gonna accept it, and that's cool. But I'm good with that explanation. And I ain't looking to give nobody no easy way out, but looking at where America was in 1968 and early 70s, even late 70s here, where it is right now, man. Anybody that's doing anything to try to promote progress, try to have some type of uh, racial equality, racial harmony, I got to salute him. So salute to Charles Schultz for at least trying. No more talk. What, what the ladies talking about?